Jim Richards, I want to welcome you to Impact Cyber Church. Today, we're going to be talking about overcoming holiday depression. But wait, don't, don't run away because even if you don't have emotional struggles around the holidays like many of us do, we're going to be talking more specifically and getting into how to have great holidays. You know something? You can have holidays that influence your family for, for God, for uh, uh, draw people together. And it's all how you put it together. And today I'm going to share some of the pieces. I'm going to share a little bit about, about my struggle and my journey of coming out of incredible holiday depression. Now I'm telling you this, when I was young, I would start getting stoned or drunk uh, uh, at about the end of October or early November because I hated the holidays and I didn't, I didn't clean up my head until about May because I absolutely couldn't stand it. But you know something? I have great holidays now and so can you. I'll be right back. Don't go away. You're going to get something out of this that's going to change your world. Hey, be sure and click right up there on the right hand top of your screen to get the free download for this month. Now, I want to tell you, this free download is a complete series, Creating Happy Holidays. This is not just one free message. I want to tell you something, this is going to change your holidays. I want you to realize something right out of the shoes here. No matter what the holidays have been from your past, and no matter what kind of challenges you're facing, you can learn how to have great holidays, and I'm, I'm going to help you do that. I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to give you some tools, some stuff that you can put into practice that I'm telling you will change your world. And no matter what your holidays have been, even if you've had good holidays, even if you enjoy the holidays, I'm going to show you how to get your holidays even more meaningful, even more influential with the people that you love. Now, so many times that we think that, that during the holidays that it's going to all be based on how much money we have, how, how much can we spend on gifts, how much food can we buy, and all this kind of stuff. But, but I want to tell you something. If you start where you are with what you have, with very specific goals and intentions, uh, you can change your holidays and change your heart, change your life in the process and, and help your family and help the people around you. You know, when, uh, when Brenda and I got married, man, we were struggling. I was, I was hanging on death's door because of a kidney disease and, and, and a serious incurable infection that I had. Uh, I uh, was struggling financially in every way. I was missing work. There were all kinds of, all kinds of things going on in my life. I tell you, we were struggling every way that you can imagine. And so that in itself presented this incredible problem for the holidays. Because uh, by, the time, by the time we brought our families together, you know, we're talking about a house full of kids that we wanted to buy gifts for and we wanted to do things for and we wanted to help and we wanted to, them to enjoy these holidays. But then underneath all of that was this incredible depression that I would go into every holiday. Now, let me tell you, when I go into depression, I wasn't the kind of guy, you know, even as a when I was lost, I'd just get stoned, get drunk, whatever, run wild, do whatever I did but I'd still be depressed. You know, as a believer, I knew that I shouldn't be depressed, but I did. I did not understand the things that I've taught you. You know, you know just a few minutes ago, I taught you uh, about freedom from emotional debt and associations and how these, things, how these things cause you to react to circumstances today based on things you experienced yesterday. Well, you've got to realize, you know, growing up, and I don't want to paint this horrible picture. You know, I was so fortunate. I had a I had a good mother. She was a hard worker. She took as good a care as, as she can, could. She wasn't incredibly expressive with love, but she did the very, very best that she could. But, you know, my father and then later on my stepfather, they were, they were people who were selfish. They were drunks. They were violent. And so they pretty much managed to find some way to destroy every holiday that I can remember as a child. As a matter of fact, you know, my, my, my only happy holidays, that I remember, my only happy Christmas that I can remember is when my father was gone and had abandoned us before my stepfather came in. And, you know, we were poor and we were desperate, but, uh, but you know, uh, I can remember the church bringing us a church bringing us food, and so we had food to eat. My grandmother, yes, my kind of crazy grandmother that used to torment me so much. You know, she would actually help us out in the uh, in Christmas, and she was as good to us as she, as she knew how to be. 
But other than, other than maybe one or two years, uh, all of my holidays, are, especially my Christmas holidays, or any family gatherings, were basically getting together with people that I, didn't, that I hardly knew, uh, people that my father might drag in or my stepfather might drag in. And all that was going to happen was going to be everybody was going to get drunk. My mother wasn't. She, she didn't drink. Everybody was going to get drunk. And probably there was going to be a fight. Somebody was going to get beat up. Somebody was going to go to jail. Somebody was going to go to the hospital. And then on top of that, you know, whatever hopes that we had for, for any kind of gifts, as small as they may be, uh, very rarely ever came to pass. And I can actually remember, I can remember more than one Christmas where, where uh, I didn't get anything, you know, and, and boy, that was heartbreaking because, and, and I don't want to, you know, I don't even understand all of it or don't want to go into it. But there'd be times my siblings would get things and I wouldn't get anything. And I'm sure there was times that, that I got something and one of my other siblings didn't get, get something. It was always, always, always difficult. And uh, you know, I'll tell you one of the things after, after I became a man and had my own family, one of the things I still always hated about holidays is I don't want to spend my holidays with people I don't know. I don't want to spend my holidays with people I don't like, but I kind of felt obligated to do so. So, so every year, I mean, I, this, this depression would come on me and I, I would just begin to dread the holidays coming. And, you know, you got, you know, it's really interesting. The, the Bible talks to us about the power of tradition or the power of culture. And, uh, you know, Mark 7, 13, it says, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you've handed down. What, what's interesting is there's all kinds of ways that tradition gets handed down. And we have a lot of destructive traditions. We have a lot of ways of doing things that, that didn't work when we did them, but that's what our families do. That's how they did what they did. And we just end up doing the same things that our families did, uh, somehow expecting that this time it's going to come out different. Somehow expecting that this time is just not going to be quite as chaotic or not going to end up uh, with everybody uh, uh, mad, violent or, or angry or, or, or whatever. And so because we feel obligated to uphold our traditions, our culture, then that becomes an association. So, so you know, there, there was nobody telling me as an adult that I had to spend time with people I didn't know or didn't like. There was nobody telling me as an adult that I had to uh, participate in or give in to or allow things to happen around me that were going to become painful and destructive. You know, I had the power to make these decisions. But because the holidays got me in touch with these past experiences, they became associations that drew all of that out of me. And I'm telling you, I don't even know how my wife tolerated me because Brenda, Brenda loves holidays and she's always made our holidays festive and she's always wanted them, wanted to create great memories for our kids. And, and, uh, you know, and I would do the very, very best I could. As a matter of fact, I, I can't tell you how many times uh, on, on Christmas morning, you know, I'd come down and I'd be with the kids. And the honest truth is I would have to go upstairs because I knew that even though I wasn't going to outwardly do anything or, or, or be mean, I knew that you could just look at me and tell that there was something bad wrong with me. And I didn't want my kids to see that. I didn't want my kids to be exposed to that. And so, so it really, really, really became convoluted. And, um, and, and, and I want you to know that, that, that I had to face some incredible personal challenges in order to break out of that. And at the, at the end of the day, yeah, you're going to have to deal with all of your beliefs and, and you can do that. But you know what? There's some practical things that you can do as you begin to create new traditions. You know, there's a famous story that, that most of you probably heard about the woman who, who every year she'd buy a turkey or buy a ham, cut the ends off of her ham, put it in the oven, you know, oven and cook it. And uh, her husband kept saying, why, 
why do you cook it that way? She said, well, that's the way you're supposed to cook ham. And he, he said, well, you know, you're just throwing away, you're wasting a lot of this, you know. And so they would kind of bicker a little bit about it. And he thought what she was doing was, was ridiculous. And she said, well, that's, look, that's the way my mother always cooked it. So that's the way I'm going to cook it. So finally it came down to her asking her mother. So mom, tell me, I've been trying to explain to my husband why we cut the ends off of the hams when we cook them. And her mother said, well, the reason I did it was because our oven wasn't big enough for a big ham. Well, you know, there's things like that that it's like we do and we don't even know why we do them. They don't even make sense. Well, you know something, if, if you've been cutting the ends off of the ham, so to speak, in other words, if you've, if you've been doing things you don't even know why you're doing, I want to tell you, you've got the power to make choices. You've got the power to choose what kind of holidays that you want to have. You've got the power to create the kinds of traditions and memories that you want your kids to have. You've got the power to decide if holidays are going to be just a, a, a cultural thing that you do, if it's going to be just uh, uh, buying presents and feeding people, or if it's going to have spiritual value, if it's going to contribute to people's life. You can decide anything you want to decide about the holidays. And when we come back, I'm going to share my journey and how Brenda and I walked out of this and how she helped me get out of this and how the Lord helped me get out of this to where I could really, really enjoy the holidays. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Hey, I've got a great Christmas gift for you and your family. It's called Creating Happy Holidays. And this is absolutely free. This is my gift to you. This is your gift from Impact Ministries, Jim and Brenda Richards, and the whole team here because we want you to have great holidays. All you got to do is just right there at the top right-hand corner of your screen, click on that, and it will take you to a place where you can download this four-message series as a free gift. Listen, this is going to change your world, going to help you have great holidays and change everything every future event with your family. You know, one of the things that brings so much healing, and, and almost any time that I'm talking to somebody that's struggling with depression of, of any kind, struggling, you know, uh, with, with, these, with these things of the past, struggling with loss, one of the things I always tell people is get outside of yourself. S you know, stop focusing all of your attention on you and what you're going through. And one of the best ways to get outside of yourself is to serve other people, bring a benefit to the lives of other people. When Brenda and I got married, we had deep compassion for divorcees and widows. And in my personal ministry over the years, I always found that, that many divorcees, widows, and even single people, you know, really struggle at the holiday. That would be when they would, they would revisit the loss of a family member that they loved. It would, you know, they would just have this, this loneliness and this hurting or, or, or many divorcees and singles sometimes just didn't have anyone, didn't have family to spend time with. And so, so, uh, uh, we sat down and it, this was actually the first year we were married. It was actually the second Christmas we were together, but it was within the first year we were married. So the first year we were married, we made a decision that for Christmas and for Thanksgiving, we would always open our home and invite, and we would handpick them, you know, and, I, and I'm going to go into this in, uh, a little bit later on about how to make sure you're strategic about how to have great holidays. But we would invite people in that we knew would otherwise be alone at the holidays. They would otherwise probably be somewhere struggling with depression, becoming suicidal or, 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 or whatever might happen. And I'll never forget, we lived in a little 1,100 square foot par apartment. And, uh, you know, we had a, a tiny little kitchen and a tiny little dining room and not much of a living room. And uh, we, uh, you know, we filled that place up. We, we borrowed a, a round table from somebody and managed to move the furniture around. So we had our, our small dining room table and we had this little round table. And uh, we invited people in. And, uh, and, and our kids, you know, we didn't give them a lot of lectures about Christmas and holidays, but we modeled to our kids this aspect of the holidays that we think is, is incredibly important. And so one of the things that I found is that, you know, when you're giving, when you're giving your life away, when you're, when you're reaching out and you're, you're attempting to help other people, one of the things that you'll find is you experience grace to do whatever it is you're doing. Anytime you're going to try to walk in love, anytime you're going to try to walk in the Word of God and you're committed to it and trusting God, you are going to experience degrees of the grace of God. Now, when you experience 
the grace of God for whatever your purpose is, one of the things amazing is you start leaving these other things behind. In other words, because there were people there that, that I wanted to help, because there were people there that, that I wanted to serve, because I, I had a purpose uh, for Thanksgiving. I had a purpose for Christmas that was beyond myself. It was beyond eating a bunch of food and swapping a bunch of presents. Then, then that purpose caused me to experience the grace of God, and the experience of uh, the grace of experience the grace of God caused me to rise above these emotions. And the joy then that I had in the holidays. Now, now I can in, I can just enjoy the holidays. I can just enjoy my kids. I can just enjoy you know life in general much easier. But then, at that time, I, what I enjoyed was the fact that I knew I was doing something meaningful that was contributing to the life, to the lives of, of other people. And of course, we always would turn it into times of sharing and nearly always, you know, break out a guitar and have some worship. And, and it just turned into an incredible day with people. Now, keep in mind, we, we, I wasn't pastoring a church. I wasn't trying to get these people to, to do anything for me. I wasn't trying to get anything out of them. I just wanted to contribute to their life. So maybe you, when you think about the holidays, it might be good to start thinking about uh, who, who would be alone if I don't invite them into my home. Now, over the years, you know, when we had a larger facility, it got to where we would have anywhere from a minimum of 100 to sometimes as many as 200 people that were single, divorcees, widows, uh, you, know, that are, are, you know, they were there with no family or here in Huntsville with no family. And, and we had a large kitchen and we were able to do it. But even to this day, it's very rare that we have a holiday that we don't still invite in one or two or three or four or five sometimes people who we know would otherwise not have a great holiday. Get outside yourself. Man, I'm going to tell you something. If, 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 if we would just put more effort into serving other people, it would be amazing how many of our problems just die. They wither away just from, just from a lack of attention. I, 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 you know, I, I had a good friend whose father had died, and his, his mother struggled with grief. I mean, she just struggled and struggled with grief. And uh, it was a long time ago when this story happened, so I may, get it, I, I may have just a few of the facts slightly off, but, but you'll, get the gen, you'll get the general gist of this. So, so her mother, I mean, his mother finally decided she would go see a psychiatrist to try to get out of this depression and grief. So she goes and sees the psychiatrist, and, and, um, and they have a session or two. And so the psychiatrist said, oh, here's what I want you to do. And, and she was about 70 whenever this happened. Uh, he said, I want you to go down to the old... I want you to bake cookies and take cookies down to the old folks' home for the elderly. And uh, man, she went home. She got so mad. She's like, man, I, I was going there to get help. I thought this guy was going to help me, and he wants me to go bake cookies for the elderly. I'm elderly myself. No, 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 no. But because she was just a little bit on the tight side, she thought, well, I paid him $75 to give me that advice. So I need to at least try it once. And so she began baking cookies and taking them to a local uh, retirement home or, or a home for elderly. I don't, I don't remember exactly, you know, what kind of people were there. I just know that they were, they were elderly. And the amazing thing was, this was her breakout point. This was where her life turned around, found meaning, and she began to pull out of her depression and have some purpose in life. Let me, let me tell you something. If you don't have some purpose, some positive purpose that involves serving other people, I got news for you, you'll never get out of depression. And the worst thing that we do whenever we, whenever we ha ha struggle about something emotional or have depression, one of the worst things that we do is we focus on that depression and we sit down and don't do nothing and we disqualify ourselves. We convince ourselves that since we have a struggle that we don't have anything to offer when the real truth is we've always got something to offer. There's always somebody that's in worse shape than we are. There's always somebody that needs to hear what we've got to say. There's always somebody that can, that can benefit from what we bring them. Now, one of the first things that people say when I, when I talk about this is they say, well, Jim, you know, I don't have the money to do that. Well, I'll tell you something. When Brenda and I would do this, of course, you know, we, we would sometimes, we would usually ask them to bring a little something if they could. And we didn't put pressure on them to do that. But uh, we didn't have the money. I, I remember there was one particular woman that we invited to this. Uh, uh, she was a, a divorcee and she was lonely and, and, uh, you know, 
people who have a broken heart, they kind of get cynical and a little, little mean sometimes. And, and so she was, she was asking me about, you know, how to improve her life. I said, look, you, you need to have some friends. You, you need to serve some other people. And she's, and she's, this is right after one of these events that we'd had. And she said, Jim, that's easy for you to say because I don't have money like you and Brenda have. Well, what she didn't know is that the meal that she just ate with us, we took the very last food that we had on our shelves to feed her and our guests that day. Now, I'm not saying that to make me look like something, but I'm just saying, you know, you decide what you're going to do. You trust God and, you know, you move within reason. I mean, I, I knew, I knew I'd, I'd get a check in a few days. I knew, I knew we would recover from this, but it, we weren't. You know, if you're just going to serve people when it's convenient, if you're just going to serve people when you have a surplus, I got news for you. You're never going to find yourself serving people too much. And in fact, I'll, I'll even go a step further. If you're only going to, if you're not going to serve people where you are right now with whatever resources you have, I'm talking about time, money, energy. If you're not going to serve people where you are, don't fool yourself and think that if things were better, you would actually do it. You will do in the future what you are doing right now. That's a biblical principle. So step out of yourself and turn your holidays into something that's really what, you know, Thanksgiving is about giving thanks, giving, you know, and getting, get people involved in giving thanks. Christmas is supposed to be about celebrating the birth of our Savior who, who came to, you know, to free the world uh, from sin and death and, and destruction. There's all kinds of purposes here that have nothing to do with what our cultures have defined them to be. And you can step out of this, and I'm going to tell you something. You, you can move into, again, you can move into an incredible holiday, and you can start creating new members. You can start teaching your kids and your grandkids what the holidays are all about because of how you model. Let me just mention a couple other things real quick. I'm just going to hit these in passing. Number one, there's family members you don't want to be around. You know, because they still relate to you like you're the old you. They still drudge up your past. You know something? And when you're around those kind of people, then you start responding like the old you. And so, you, you know, you're a new creation and you need to be with people who respect and support that or at least be with people who will not attack that. Don't spend holidays with people that are going to cause you to have a negative experience. You say, well, I've, I've got to. They're my family. No, you don't. You know, many times, you know, it kind of saved me and Brenda because I could always say to my family or her family or anybody that we really just, it, it wasn't that I didn't want to spend time with my family, but, but we could say to anybody that, that pressured us to, you know, to be with them that we didn't want to be with, we could always just say, you know something, uh, this, is how, this is how we spend our holidays. And they could either come and be a part of it and flow with it or, or not, but it was an amazingly simple and powerful way uh, to be with people that supported who we were, where we were going, what we were doing. Uh, also, you know, I, I don't really want to be with people I don't know unless I'm trying to be with them based on serving them in the gospel. In other words, be strategic about who you're going to be with. And sometimes out of obligation, yes, you might go somewhere and, and be around some of these people, make it short. But don't let them define the holidays for you. Get strategic. Spend time serving people. Spend time with people that support you. Avoid the people who are going to beat you down, who's going to be critical of you, who's going to be negative, who's going to hurt your hopes and hurt your dreams. And, and we, won't, we won't talk about this now. You'll get this in this series. Just the whole concept of give up the idealistic concept of buying uh, extravagant presence that you can't even afford. It's amazing how much disappointment we have because we think that we're obligated to live beyond our current budget. Let me tell you something. Uh, your kids may want the latest and greatest toys. They may want the biggest and the best and the most expensive. But at the end of the day, the thing that they're going to remember is the fact that you spent time with them. The thing they're going to remember is you made it fun. The thing that they're going to remember is, is you made it about what it's really about, about actually giving thanks for, and recognizing what you have, and then about celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus. Hey, be sure and click right up there on the right-hand top of your screen to get the free download for this month. Now, I want to tell you, this free download is a complete series, Creating Happy Holidays. This is not just one free message. I want to tell you something, this is going to change your holidays. Man, I want to tell you something, there are so many great things happening 
around the world. And I'm so excited. You know, as bad as it is around the world and as bad as things are in America, I'm glad I'm alive at this point in time to be a part of solving the problem. And you know something? Our world changers are part of solving the problem. I want to tell you something. People are constantly contacting me and saying, Jim, what can we do to help? We want to change the way the world sees God. Well, obviously, number one, we want to invite you to participate financially. Man, it takes money to do what we do. And you know we never push for money. We never beg for offerings. And so, so if God's touching your heart, if you're passionate about what we're doing, then that's a starting place. But also become what I call an internet evangelist. You know, uh, be sure and, and, and click on the thing at the bottom down here that tells you to, to like our, our broadcast on YouTube and subscribe to it because that helps us. It helps other people get this message out. But everything you see, every time I post a message, repost it, put it on your Facebook page, help other people make this journey. All right, our mentoring moment is all about bringing this down to practical application. None of this information does you any good if you ha have no way to put it in practice. And what I want to teach you to, how to do is to be strategic, not just strategic at the holidays, but be strategic with everything that goes on with life. Be strategic about everything that you do so that everything you do turns into something that strengthens your faith and and builds you up as a person, confirms your new identity in Christ, not something that takes away from it. You know, whenever we had a residential Bible schools, Bible school students would generally, it didn't just happen here. I talked to Bible schools all over the country and Christmas holidays is when you lose the most students because they go home for Christmas holidays. Man, they're living in victory. They're praying every day. They're out witnessing to people. They're studying the Bible. And, and life is finally working like it's supposed to work for them. And then what happens? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Then they go home for the holidays. And when they go home for the holidays, they get back into this old familiar setting around these people who, yes, they love, yes, they're family members, but they keep relating to them as they were in the past. And when people relate to you the way you were in the past, then you tend to slip into those patterns of the way you were in the past. And I can't tell you how many Bible school students would drop out of Bible college, give up their dream, and many of them backslide just because they would get so deflated and so discouraged about going home for the holidays and having to be in those kinds of environments. So you know something? The, we need to guard our hearts. And the best way to guard our heart is, number one, never put ourselves in a position to go around people or situations where... Uh, where we're going to be discouraged. Even though you love these people, even though they're family, you may not need to go around them. You know, the Bible tells you that a brother nearby is better than a family member far away. Connect to the people that support you. Be strategic about who you spend time with. And I'll tell you, it'll build you up.